Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In this episode, we're going to be talking about our Hello World application again, but this time writing it with callbacks. Now, the reason we might want to do this is if we want to target platforms like the web, for instance, or maybe iOS, there's a little bit of a different way that you need to structure your main. So I'm putting this video at the start of this series so you can kind of decide if those are platforms that you want to target. Otherwise, usually it's easy enough to refactor application to fit in here. Okay, so let me go ahead and dive in so we can go ahead and See example, we'll live code this. But basically what I want to get rid of is this, right? Main is our entry point. Now there's many different entry points into functions. If you've done some Windows programming, it's WinMain. If you've done some graphical user interface programming, sometimes there's like a Qt main function or WX main if you're using you know different widget libraries. So basically we could redefine where the program starts. And what we want to do in SDL3 is actually get rid of this main function. So we'll just get rid of it here. I still need the sdl.h uh, uh, library here. And we want to use the callback library here. So let's go ahead to the uh, API index. And I'm going to search for this main use callbacks here. And this is going to give us an idea of what we want to do here. So I want to define this main uh, use callbacks here. Let me go ahead and put it at the very top here. And I also need to include this SDL uh, main file here, okay, because that's where this uh, macro is defined here. Um, I need to do this, uh, I'm going to do it here, and that should be the basic uh, premise for our setup here, okay? Now, again, what this is going to allow us to do is basically define these four functions here for initializing our app, uh, setting up the app event for event handling, uh, each iteration of our application, so in a main loop as we increment, and then what happens when we quit here. So I'm going to go ahead and just open these up in four windows here as we implement them. Uh, let's get rid of that. Uh, and let's just clearly just copy them in here. Let's do this here, just so I have the function available here. Uh, let's do this. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy in app event. We'll do the same thing here. And this is a function call here. And app iterate. Let's go ahead and do that. And the last one here, app quit. OK, so if you want to build this from scratch, I will show you an example at the end uh, in the SDL repository. Uh, that's basically going to do the same thing. Um, but these are our four main functions we need. SDL app initialize, app, SDL app event, uh, for event processing, uh, app iterate, this is where you would do like your draw calls and then what happens when you quit. So we can use some of the functions that we've learned already like SDL, uh, SDL, not SQL, uh, quit here. And in our initialize, as you can imagine, we would need something like SDL init, SDL init video. And let's go ahead and put that in here. And let's go ahead and see if this builds here. So let's see here. Oh, I've got a few warnings here. Uh, it's saying I don't have my returns properly set up. That's not good. Now that's just a warning in the language uh, for whatever reason. So uh, what do we return here? Well, uh, let's start looking at some of these functions here. So app initialize. Okay, I need a result here. Uh, what kind of result can I have here? Uh, let's see. I can either return SDL app failure or SDL app success here. Okay, so let's kind of put together what we learned from last time and say if uh, SDL init. So if this is successful, then we could return SDL app success. Otherwise, we will return SDL app uh, failure. And there might be some different ways that you want to structure this. Uh, like, actually, this is probably a little bit better if I'm being a little bit better of a programmer handling my error handling here because I might want to do some other stuff here in my initialization code. Uh, but something like that here. Okay. And I'll make this bigger so you can see the code. Uh, uh, well, let's just do it now here so you can see it uh, all on one line here. That's a little bit nicer here. Uh, let's see if that got rid of one of our warnings. Uh, so compiled. And let's see. Yes, much better here. Okay. Uh, okay, so what about SDL uh, app event? What do we have to do here? Uh, well, we have to return uh, again something, uh, meaning that our application either failed uh, there's either a success or there's actually this third guy here, SDL app continue. So that just says continue. Now we're not really doing anything interesting here. So let's just return uh, here, return SDL app continue. I'm going to do the same thing in iterate here. 
just so that we have an application that should not have any warnings. That doesn't have any warnings. We can run it. Uh, and it runs and well, it doesn't really do anything right now, <laughs> but that's the idea here. Uh, but this is sort of the callback uh, API here. Okay, so let's just take a look at this here. Again, these four functions uh, with clear defined entry points. Now normally, uh, and what we're gonna end up doing is writing our own struct that'll sort of define these functions here, and then you could kind of place them here. Um, and some other questions you might have, well, basically from your main function, the arguments get forwarded. So if you wanna do any sort of initialization stuff, you can pass that in here. And then you've also got these pointers to app state here, which is basically a void pointer, meaning you can just point to something. So if you wanna to point to some structure um, that holds some state somewhere, that way you don't need global variables. I mean, I'm gonna cheat a little bit in this video and just create an SDL window here as a global. Okay, and then, uh, you know, initialize it here with window equals SDL, create window, uh, mic SDL3 uh, callback example. I'll make this 320 by 240. And let's see, SDL, uh, I'll have to look uh, at the previous video uh, on how to find these, but SDL window resizable. There's a little flags we could pass in here. Uh, that should do the trick here. Let's see, compiles runs okay so we can't our window is not displayed but it's been created here and well i need to figure out i suppose in which of these two functions to delay our uh application let's just put it in iterate here let's put delay let's just put it for one second or a thousand milliseconds and see if it'll pop up um uh let's see oh uh maybe i made a little mistake here an stl app success uh because that's gonna terminate our app here. Let's just put SDL app continue. Let's now give this a try here and see. There we go. So I'll pop up for, uh, well, forever actually, because right, it's just going to keep calling this SDL app iterate uh, onwards and onwards and onwards and delay for a second, delay for a second. So um, in this sort of scenario, it's kind of interesting. We don't, uh, let's actually just get rid of the delay here. Uh, and if you ran this exactly as I did here, you might have to kill it or go into your task manager. Let's just do this here. Let's do this once here, just so you can see how to do it. I'm going to grep from my process here. Uh, and let's just totally kill it. Kill nine. Uh, actually, let's see. Do we have to be that extreme? Three, six, one, seven, three, nine, four. Yes, we do have to be extreme. We'll send a kill signal to it. Um, but, um, basically, I mean, the application's not really doing anything useful, so it's just stalled here, but we were able to see our window here. Let's do it again here, uh, without the delays here. Uh, and I can't terminate because I haven't written a terminate or kill event. So we're going to have to do that same experiment to get rid of it. Um, but basically this is it. This is our callback application. We can see it in one, uh, nice screen here and it's up to you as you're following this series, if you want to structure your application like this, if that's more intuitive for you, or again, if you're targeting web or maybe mobile platforms, you might want to just go with this approach anyways. Uh, and as mentioned, this pointer to app state is something that can hold your you know, local context or some global structure so that you don't have to have a bunch of uh, variables just hanging around here, right? I should probably make this static, otherwise it's only for this file. Uh, but otherwise, um, as you might have seen in some of my videos here, I might have like some structure that's initialized here, like called globals, and then call like some other function that I write called init that does maybe some of this stuff here. And then I can call into it and initialize an instance of this global structure. Again, these are some things that you might do to make your code a little bit more friendly. But I'm going to leave this as the sort of bare bones example just so you can see what's going on. Uh, as mentioned, I did want to show, here is uh, the example on the SDL uh, GitHub showing this off, uh, written by Sam Lantinga, uh, one of the initial creator of SDL here. Uh, he does a little bit more with creating a render. I think this is an example I also showed when I showed in scripting, if you did the setup uh, for web here. Uh, but anyways, there is that code as well. But now you can see how to uh, create stuff from scratch here. Um, and again, um, you know, write this once, um, check out the remarks, check out some of the related functions and so on. And uh, this is just a really nice feature. I believe this has been around since even SDL2 had this sort of callback API that you could set up. But um, again, I think they uh, did a nice job with the SDL3 documentation for this. So anyways, folks, there you have it. Feel free to follow along as always. Um, if you missed the previous lesson and have no idea what 
creating a window means make sure you watch that but uh, now you know how to do it two different ways here uh, after watching this video so again thanks for your time and attention folks and i'll look forward to seeing you in the next one